So I've just released the latest version of NoTrack, so now we're up to 0.5, but it's still an alpha release. So NoTrack is a project I've been working on to do network-wide blocking of trackers and some ad sites. The big change I've done is on the domain stats side, so now we've got a historical look back. I've also done some improvements to the speed by implementing memcache. The block list now has a search bar. and it brings back all the results. And you can also narrow it down to the letter it starts with. So there you go. I don't know whether to implement the same searcher on the top level domain block list. Uh, it's a bit simple there, there's only 12 items there, but the block list is now over 9,000. As you can see, that's grown quite a bit now, but uh, there's still more to go. I've changed how the domains are displayed now, so I'm actually given the full URL which has been quite revealing. I've picked up a few other little trackers like this one from Amazon. I don't know how I'm going to block this because I think there's quite a few numbers they use and I do hope that's not um, 28 million. <laughs> Bloody hell, I really hope it's not. Let's take a look at this historical look back. So just select the start date. Now it doesn't matter if the files don't actually exist. Actually that's unrealistic that the project didn't exist in December so um, Let's go back to there and select the 1st of January. The range is the number of days, so 30 days. And then hit Submit. Now this calendar only works in Oracle and Chrome. If you're using Firefox, it's plain and boring. So there you go, that is 12 pages. But once your first result is up, it's actually quite quick to flick through them all. So that's not too bad though, I've processed nearly three weeks worth of logs on the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> that's quite a lot of data for it to deal with. Taking a look at websites that are blocked. So the whole month, um, hmm, not too many. And you've also got this time search here, so you can just look back like over the past few minutes. Okay, there's been nothing over five minutes. I still had only requests that were blocked on, didn't I? So all requests, five minutes. So you can see the difference on performance now. That is quite an improvement. So anyway, let's show you what you need to do for the upgrade. So this is an old version, 0 0.4. By the way, this issue here with the link spilling outside the div is now fixed. I didn't realize about that. So the upgrade page doesn't work properly. So anyway, it just tells you what to do here. No, no track dash dash upgrade. So I pop my pseudo password in. Now when I go back to the admin page, it says here, important note, as of no track 0 0.5 released 27th of January, a significant number of changes have been made to the underlying functionality. Therefore you will need to reinstall no track. Sorry, I just couldn't get around it, but uh, so if you don't do the reinstall, most of these pages won't open. Remember to take a copy of the DNS mask log file if you have made any changes. Unless you've been messing around with DHCP or custom block lists, then odds are you haven't made any changes. So you can disregard that. So what I need to do is go to the NoTrack folder. Let's open SSH again. Then rerun the installer. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm going to take free DNS this time. Now I'll go over and install in the packages again. Right, there you go, the install has been completed. Refresh the page to get the latest CSS file loaded. Now the historical look back will only just start working now. Unless, uh, this is going to be a bit long-winded for me to tell you all this, but uh, this program on here called DNS Log Archive. The cd slash var slash log slash no track ls. So normally there'll be a list of files in here. So what you would do is sudo DNS Log Archive file dot log dash k, and that will process the file and make it compatible with the historical lookback. There you go, that was the news that NoTrack version 0.5 is released. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.